I'm John Richards, and I manage the developer advocacy team here at Pantheon. And I'm very excited to be talking to you about Pantheon's front end site. In this video, I'll show you how to make a new Next.js front end that pulls content in from a headless WordPress instance over GraphQL. Then we'll look at our high level view of our architecture. Then I'll make a front end styling change in my Next.js code base via a pull request on GitHub. And then we'll wrap up by seeing what it looks like for content editors to make updates to their posts in this architecture. Hey, spoiler alert. We at Pantheon are bullish on server-side rendering with Next.js because there's no lag time between hitting publish in WordPress and seeing those changes on the live public-facing site. All right, let's jump over to the Pantheon dashboard and see how this works. Here, I can see all of my sites in a list. There's a new section now called front end sites. This is behind a feature flag right now, but if you want to try this out yourself, follow the link in the description to request access to this feature. Let's go ahead and create a new site. This new section is for front end sites. We currently have working SDKs for Next with WordPress and Drupal, as well as Gatsby with WordPress. Our Gatsby starter kit uses static site generation to deliver the front end site, while our Next.js starter kits do server side rendering. I'll select Next with WordPress. This process will automatically make a new GitHub repository for me with Next.js code, copying the Pantheon starter kit. When you do this for the first time, you're going to go through an authentication flow with GitHub. Now, I've already done that, so I just need to name my new GitHub repository. Next, I need to choose which CMS I want to link this to. Now, the CMS backend needs to already exist, and I created one. So I'm going to hook that up to this front end site. When I hit continue, that kicks off the build process that takes five minutes or so to run. All the containers are spun up and everything is configured to work together. While we wait for our Next.js container to spin up, let's look at a high level architecture diagram of what we're going to get. Now first, before recording this video, I spun up that fresh WordPress site. That's on the CMS site side of things. And Pantheon's been doing that for a, a decade. We do some really cool stuff with containers and other technologies on the CMS side, but all that's kind of simplified out of this diagram. For our purposes today, let's not worry too much about the WordPress side of things. Now, over on the front end sites side of things, we're doing either server side rendering via a Node.js container, or we're just gonna plop a static site straight into storage. In either case, our front end site sits behind a CDN. In either case, the front end site's code travels from a GitHub repo to a build process to then either the container or the static side of things. For our Next.js site here, we're doing the dynamic path with a container. Let's take a look at the outcome of the site we spun up. We have a dashboard for our front end site and here we have a link to go view the actual site. I can click this and that's gonna let me see the front end of my website. This is the Next.js site and it's already pulling data in from my headless WordPress site. I can click around and see example content that's pulled in. Here we can see a list of the posts on the website. Let's go back to our site dashboard. There's a link to jump over to the GitHub repository, and that's where the code lives. By entering my GitHub account, it generated all this code for me and configured it to point to the WordPress site that I selected. And as a front-end developer, I would primarily be developing inside of this Git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and make a change uh, and show what that kind of workflow looks like. Now, I want to make a small but obvious change. Our starter kit uses Tailwind CSS, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in some Tailwind classes and then make a pull request so we can see that result. So we're just going to add a gradient here to our site. The next step is to commit the change and create a pull request so it can then be reviewed. Now, that pull request exists in GitHub. So let's switch back to our Pantheon dashboard and see if this GitHub change did anything. 
we can see here that the pull request triggered the build process in a multi-dev pull request branch. This will take a few minutes, so I use the magic of recording to jump us ahead to the future so we can see that end result. All right, the build is complete. Remember that diagram from earlier? Our Next.js code was run through the node server to create this new build. Let's take a look at the result. Hey, our change has worked. Now, you likely agree with me that this is probably a bit too much color, but no worries. As long as this pull request isn't merged into the main branch, the live site's not gonna change. So further development could be done to get this pull request ready and into an acceptable state. So that's what the experience for developers making a code change is like. But what about editors using the site? Will they need to wait for a build as well? No, content editors don't wanna wait for a CI process. For editors who wanna modify content, they don't need access to Next.js or GitHub, but instead they can work directly via the WordPress backend. So let's switch over to our headless WordPress dashboard. Here, I'll go to the admin section and take a look at the posts. You can see we've got this article about delicious pizza here, but today I have a bit of a sweet tooth and want to share my love of brownies. So I'm coming in here and I'm hungry for some sweets. I'm going to go ahead and replace this featured image of a pizza with some brownies. And then, you know, I might as well share about how tasty these brownies are. Now, I've updated this content, but it's just sitting in our editor. You can take a look at the site here and see that uh, it still says pizza. So we we'll go back to our admin area, we're in the editor, and we're gonna hit update, which saves our changes. Now this is gonna let us see the advantage of using Next.js and server-side rendering. Instead of needing to wait for a full site rebuild, like when we made that code change, Node is able to quickly re-render just the content that I edited. So I can go to the live site, and refresh it, boom. We see that the changes are already showing to site visitors. Server-side rendering allows editors to be able to see their changes right away, matching the experience they're used to with WordPress. If you're interested in front-end sites, we'd love to have you come try it out. See if Pantheon is right for your next headless WordPress project. Let us know about your project using the link down below. Mm -hmm.